He's going to need.
<laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to the UGC League. Um, just a second here. Just give me uno momento. I think my mic is not as loud as it should be. All right, let's try this. Hello, 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 hello. All right, how's that? All right, yeah, that, that looks like it's good. Um, I think I had the gain turned all the way down on my microphone, so uh, hopefully we're good now. If the audio is a little funky in the stream, please let me know in the chat. But we are underway, and I'm going to have a co-caster joining me, so I'm going to give him a call on Skype here. You're probably going to hear some ringing. Uh, there we go. Pick up, buddy. Viewers don't want to hear the ringing. They don't want to hear it. Actually, I can I can mute in there. Yo. There we go. What's up, buddy? How you doing? Good, good. I'll be back one sec. Okay. Alrighty, let's switch over to the, uh, oh, draft overlay, there we go. Alright, this is gonna be good. Alright, so welcome everybody to the UGC League. I am Captain Canuck and I'm gonna be joined here by my good buddy Tythel, or, uh, Julian, as I'll probably refer to him throughout the broadcast here, but, uh, yeah, he sounds like he's got something going on, so he'll be out of here. But, uh, anyways, we got two South American teams going at it right here. Team Ching versus the, the Paradas Tretas. I am terrible with other languages, and I have no clue how to pronounce either of those, so it's probably going to be Cheng versus the PT. Um, I did Google Translate the PT, and that uh, does come out to the bullshit stops. That's what the translation is, so uh, it's like the fun ends here. Okay, wait. Gotta get open mic in game. Alright, uh, Julian, can you get uh, open mic going in game as well so that your voice comes through on the ticket? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. There we go. Alright, hopefully I'm these guys load. i double right now, though. What? You're, oh, yeah. Uh, there is an option called mute co broadcaster under the. Uh, yeah, mute co broadcasters on the right side there. You can select that and it'll mute me in the game. Uh oh. Is this lobby gonna fail? Lobby's gonna fail. No, don't fail, Lobby. Come on. We worked so hard. What the? Mute co-broadcasters. Yeah, no, something this to this is no bueno. Um. Disconnect and I'll rehost the lobby. Yeah. Can we do that here? I just did. Um. Okay. All right. This is some strange stuff. All right. I'm gonna throw the overlay back up here. All right. Create lobby. Let's try this again. Uh, I just got a message my stats, man. Where are you, Quantum? There we go. What kind of stats is he oh, running? Oh, crap. Um, wait, what happened? Okay. Alright, folks, I'm going to throw the overlay back up and... Actually, oh, no, we got people flooding into the lobby, so we'll, we'll be going in just a second here, but... Um, yeah, that's some weird, funky stuff we got going on. Yeah, yeah 58 sure. seconds. Yep. Someone was saying the lobby was paused? I didn't even know you could pause before the start of the game, but... Alright. We'll see. We will see indeed. Oh boy. Oh yeah, yeah, jump in the lobby again so that you're... Second, yeah, there you go. Oh boy. Technical difficulties, love it. He's asking for my Twitter? Yeah, I think so. Because he does a plug for everyone at once, but if you don't have one, then just don't worry about it.
BO3? No, two. Two games. Two two wonderful games. Uh, I should have muted it. Everyone's hearing all of this, but that's okay. That's all right. Hopefully we can get this going. It was the Brazil server. That's what I, I blame. Yeah, probably, actually. Okay. Val just doesn't care enough. Nope. Volvo. This is kind of what we got to deal with. That's all right. That's South America. They got a bad down there, man. They got a bad. Where is the last player? <laughs> Yeah, I got a soccer game to play after this. Yes, you do. And this fucking wet disaster. Vancouver right now is extremely wet. <laughs> is it? I have not been outside today. <laughs> you shut it. Yep. I woke up and went straight to my computer and played Dota. And then I'm casting Dota. And it's a wonderful day. It is a wonderful day. Yep. I was actually wishing that it would be miserable today so I could stay inside. I didn't feel like doing anything. I went to the warehouse. Yeah? How was that? Yeah. yeah. It was okay. It's cheap. Yep. Their beer is overpriced, though. Yep. That's how they get you. Why is there Yo no one in the lobby? All Yo, right. have, you ever, have you ever had the chicken and waffles from Yolks? No. Oh, it's so good. Actually, I'm gonna I'm gonna mute us here for the sake of the broadcast because it doesn't look like this lobby is gonna go right away. We're still waiting on two people, so... All right, let me just do this here. We'll be right back, folks.
All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're back. Hopefully this works out. We'll see if it does. Um, looks like we had some issues with uh, the server routing for Team Cheng here. They've got, I, I guess they had a couple players that were using a program called WT Fast um, to try to um, uh, to try to speed up their ping to the Brazil servers and some weird stuff happened and this, that, we had a disconnect. Anyways, looks like everyone's going to jump in now, but Cheng is going to be playing with a, a little bit less, um, or with a little bit more ping as they're not no longer using that routing software. So, um, so yeah, we're going to have to deal with that. They they might be a little bit uh, slow on some of their reactions. We'll, we might see some misplays, but hopefully the game plays out just fine and both teams uh, put up a good fight. Anyways, like I said, this these are two uh, South American teams here. we got uh, the Paradas Tretas, which... The PT, I'm going to refer to him as. Um, I looked that up. Google Translate says that means the bullshit stops. So uh, I like that team name. And Team Cheng, we have no clue what that means or what it stands for or even how to pronounce it. Um, I, I actually had my stats man just Googling it, and he's like, I have no clue, dude. So Cheng it is. That's just what we'll refer to him as, and I hope I'm not butchering that too bad. Anyways, I am going to be joined here by my good buddy Julian, a.k.a. Typhel. How you doing, bud? Afternoon, afternoon. All right. So, uh... Yeah, looks like we're Changwei, Changwei. All right, Changwei is, is the pronunciation I'm getting from the stats man. So I'll figure that out. Anyways, once we I'll get into the, the game VS here, band to start. I'll like the VS band to start. Yeah, it's safe. Oh, oh it's man, safe. I'm hearing you twice now because somebody reset all of my options in Dota, and it's really fault is this? <laughs> Whoever used my computer to play oh. Dota, I don't know who it was, but somebody yeah. reset all of my launch options, and it really messed me up. Anyways. Um, we're in the game though, and uh, we are going to be having a statsman joining us. That's uh, Quantum Stats. He's from Standard Deviants. They're going to be uh, throwing those stats up throughout the course of the game. Um, so yeah. Oh, uh, by the way, Julian, how's my mic right now? Does it sound good? I, I had you're some... great. You're great quality right, right now. I, I had some issues with the gain being a little too low earlier. So, am I still coming out in double for you? Uh, nope. You are good. I fixed that. Um, being asked to lower my open mic sensitivity in Dota a little bit, so let's drop that down, and hopefully that won't be too bad. Um, oh, lower my sensitivity, so put the open mic threshold up. That'll do it. Beautiful. Can you hear me? Can you hear me now, Quantum? Can you hear me now, Quantum? Yes? Yes? Yeah, alright, we're good. Alright, so a little, a, lot of, of, a little bit of audio. Ban first pick kind of thing happening lately. Yeah, totally. Um, meta. That, uh, yeah. I mean, these are all pretty meta bans out here. Vengeful Spirit's one of the top sports in the meta right now. Lion as well, we might see him picked up early on here, but the Shadow Fiend, the Axe, and the Troll all taken out. Juggernaut's another popular uh, pickup here that we might see getting, get uh, brought up. Is, yeah, there he goes. Yeah, first there you pick go. Jug. Dire team. So, yeah, that, uh, that Jug's been seeing a lot of play recently, and. Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know how I feel about the troll, like, eh, or the the jug rather. I mean, he he can definitely be countered, and uh, I think there's a lot of heroes that do very well against him. One of which is Dazzle. I mean, Dazzle does nothing but physical damage, so uh, he's uh, fully capable of hitting that Juggernaut uh, with all he's got when he's spinning. And of course, that Shallow Grave really helps out in uh, keeping allies alive from that Omni Slash. So, yeah, definitely, uh, definitely a good pickup here, and uh, helps him hold it down. Yeah, and. I'm, I'm loving these minus armor drafts that we start seeing from some teams. I'm, I'm curious to see it, what uh, the PT is going to do with this. But uh, Dazzle Bristle, Bristle right off the bat, that's a lot of minus armor and a lot of physical damage. And a lot of survivability. No one is going to die right now. Um, we might actually PT. see a Bristleback coming up on this. Or not a Bristleback, sorry, an Alchemist coming into this game. We could, yeah. Be interesting to see. Uh, yeah, Witch Doctor is another hero that uh, synergizes really well with that physical damage type of draft. But uh, that is going to be picked up there by the uh, Changwei, so... Instead Here comes of an AA ban. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I, I think uh, I think AA would actually be really good on either team right now. So uh, maybe it'll yes. get banned, or maybe it'll get uh, maybe someone will get greedy and hope that they can snag it up in the next phase. But we're yeah. having first kick, first pick for PT. So I mean, if they don't if they don't ban it for the second time, I can almost guarantee they're going to pick it up. Yeah, and Sniper gets uh, actually gets through the first stage of picks here. That wasn't that was a hero that we uh, failed to mention during the first couple picks, but has been really potent nowadays and uh, has been seen quite a bit. But he's going to be banned out here in the second phase, so no Sniper. And uh, thank God for that. I don't think anyone likes Sniper. I don't even like watching Sniper. Yeah, he and 
he hasn't been too friendly against some of our games we've had lately, hasn't he? <laughs> no, he has been an absolute monster. Has uh, destroyed the heck out of us. And we've not been happy campers about it. But, uh, yeah, Tidehunter going to be taken out as well. That's a little bit of uh, AoE initiation. Kind of holds down um, some of those bigger targets that uh, the PT is looking to pick up. And, yeah. Oh. Curious about the drow ban. I think that's... Yeah. yeah, I mean, drow works very well with the bristleback just because of the fact that, you know, bristle just kind of stands on the front line and keeps people from getting to the drow. But I really don't know if we would have seen a drow had that not been banned out here. It uh, yeah, I, seems like a I, stretch. I think, I think that's the same reasoning for the snipers, why they're trying to get rid of the drow, is that bristleback dazzle combo is just is nasty. Yeah, I mean, being able to keep someone alive that dishes out that much damage is, uh, is, is very, very strong, so... We'll see what happens, but... Well, getting last ban and then first pick, that's it's a pretty big decision that they have right oh, now. Oh, okay. All right, so... Um, just got info from Quantum. He says, Irrelevant, but Changwei may be a reference to the Uruguayan soccer player Richard Morales. It's his nickname. That's very possible because uh, the Changwei is from Uruguay. Um, the PT is from Peru, so we got Peru versus Uruguay going up here, but... Uh, yeah, that, that could very well be it. And actually, I wonder if that's his face hovering over uh, Chin's profile picture here. I wonder if that's uh, the soccer player's face on there. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so th so that's exactly what it is. We figured it out. Makes sense. Thanks for investigating that, Quantum. It uh, I felt a little not. stupid looking over that, but yeah. Good job. All right, so the Warlock's going to be banned out here by the PT. He's trying to keep down that AoE initiation. I I, I don't know. I, I don't think I've seen a lot of teams running that Warlock, but... You know, if you get him in the right scenario, Warlock can be just ridiculous. And uh, works very well against the Bristleback as well. And, uh, you know, let's see. Huge, what is it, two or three second uh, Magic Immunity Piercing Stun on the Warlock Golem. So, it's it's pretty huge. What's it going to be? What's it going to be? Well, I think I think they're already committed to this Minus Armor, so I'd like to see something else along those lines. The Vengeful Spirit's already banned out, which is the other big Minus Armor support. But, uh... What else could we be picking up here? Lycan's oh, Lycan. Oh, man. This is getting dangerous here. That's That's nasty lane. Yeah, there is a lot of damage coming out. But uh, this Lycan Dazzle lane could be pretty weak. I mean, Dazzle, he, he does okay keeping heroes alive defensively. But unless he's comboed properly, the Dazzle doesn't do a whole lot in lane. He just kind of keeps people alive, keeps them healed and sustained. He doesn't do great against a lot of burst damage. And, uh, you know, an aggro tri lane with a Witch Doctor Juggernaut plus one could really put a dent in this Lycan's early farm. We'll have to see what they do about that, but I'm still curious as to what the PT wants to pick up, pick up for their next uh, support here. You know what I would love to see? Uh, I would love to see a Naga Siren support. She's got the Minus Armor. She's got that AoE shutdown. She's got, uh, you know, her, her ultimate can really uh, could isolate that Juggernaut and allow them to beat on him quite a bit. I think that's and it has tons of potential of like late game potential if you you know allow the game to to roll on long enough yeah i really don't like i i doubt we'll see that because it's just not picked very often anymore but i yeah. would love to see it i think i think it would be a great addition to their team but uh here we go with the lion yeah and this viper i do like the viper pickup quite a bit it works very well against the bristleback and the dazzle but against the lichen not so much i mean uh or sorry it, oh yeah, yeah. Not so much against the Lycan. I mean, Lycan, he's just too, f too freaking fast, man. You, you, you can, you can just get, get away from anything. Hit Viper R. can't really hold him down, and uh, you know, I, I think in most scenarios, if the Lycan gets his wolves out, gets, gets that medallion up, Lycan can just beat Viper in a man fight, regardless of the poison. So. Yeah, and with metamorphosis, it's not like you can, you know, do the standard kiting down your enemies. Yeah. Because nothing really affects uh, metamorphosis move speed. Yeah, and uh, that lion as well is very good against the viper. You can keep him controlled. You can keep him sheep to uh, avoid all those nether toxins from getting uh, getting thrown out. And then the finger of death just brings him down really quick. And uh, lion actually works very well against juggernaut as well. I mean, it's kind of uh, it's kind of something that you wouldn't think of as an interaction because lion's all magic and juggernaut's known for having magic immunity. But in all reality, lion's control is so great that if you can get on the juggernaut before or even after his blade fury is down, the lion just just keeps him held in place you sheep him you, you earth spike him and then you can get that finger off and just blow him up so well like it's at least six seconds worth of disable when you use your earth spike mixed with your hex right like yeah, exactly. and then start tacking on extras there's not much you can really do against it especially yeah. when you then you have bristleback and lichen 
you know, breathing down your neck and ripping you apart while you're sitting there. Yeah, and I mean, the the only the only real uh, scenario in which the Juggernaut, you know, comes out in a favorable scenario there is if he gets the jump and kills the Lion before any of that CC can come out. And uh, if the Lion's playing smart, if he's in good position with the rest of his team around him, he should be totally fine. Um, Regardless, stat coming out here from Quantum. Lion is only 52 and 50 when played against Jug in 6.83 pro play. So it looks like there's a, you know, it's a pretty even spread between the two heroes. But I don't know if I like this Broodmother pickup. I, I, uh, the quite do really actually. rips down, you know, all of the little spiderlings as they come up. Well, that's true, but it does take two to three, um, uh, quill sprays to actually kill off the spiders. So Brood can actually stack up quite a bit before she brings him out, and she doesn't do very well against like chasing down the soul bristleback. But I think the purpose of this Broodmother uh, pick here is to just bully out this offlane so much. Like, look at the heroes that are on the uh, the PT side. They've got the Lycan, they've got the Lion, they've got the Dazzle. That's going to be their tri lane on the top lane, unless they want to put the Lycan mid, which I don't see being a, a very likely possibility. In that scenario, the only real thing they have to take care of the Broodmother is uh, is a healing wave when the Spiderlings are killing off the uh, Dire Creep wave. And, you know, that's not totally reliable. And I think if the Broodmother micros well, she's going to be just fine and will probably actually be able to pick off um, the Lion, the Lycan, the Dazzle repeatedly if they get found out on their own. So I think uh, I think she should have a very, very solid lane, which is going to give the Juggernaut and the Viper a lot of room to do what they do best. Last two bands coming out here. We got the uh, Shatter Shaman and the Storm Spirit both taken out, both SS's. Seconds, right? um, and now looking towards about 35 seconds of reserve time for the PT Five to make that last pick. Remaining. Either looking for a mid or another one position. I think if they want to go that Lycan mid, um, they're probably going to need time. some form of a ranged hero on that safe lane. Um, not sure who. The sniper would have been good had it not been banned out. But um, yeah, I don't know if they're. I don't know if. I don't know if going that three core melee is good against the uh, Viper, Brood, and Jug. I, th I think that's just too much face tank that you can't really take. But uh, what do you think, man? What do you think they go for? Ten it's a curious, it's a curious lineup. I think they need a yeah. That'll be nasty. They need a yeah. I, I think. That wasn't what I expected. <laughs> I, was, I was thinking that they're going to run something down middle lane. Slark, but I guess yeah. they're probably going to be running, you know, either Lion or Slark. That, that's, yeah, this is actually a really curious draft now, because I think the Lycan is going to be going mid, and this is probably going to be a one-position Slark. But uh, this does leave them very vulnerable to... Oh, wait a sec. <laughs> oh, okay. I had, like, one of those sneezes that just wouldn't come out, and it just messed me up. Okay, we're good. Um, but, uh, yeah, anyways. Um... Yeah, I think there's going to be a one-position Slark. We're going to be seeing that Lycan on the mid lane, which I think is going to um, end up with this Lycan being really, really, really poor. Um, I, I mean, it's probably going to be Viper mid for uh, Team Changwe. So That's having bad news bears. Yeah, I mean, yeah. you can try to farm with the Wolves, but I think Viper dominates this lane no matter what. So um, the PT is going to need some serious gankage on this lane to try to hold down the Viper and uh, keep the Lycan in any semblance of farm. And meanwhile, Slark, I mean, he does okay against Broodmother, but uh, I think if he gets left alone while these two supports are ganking, the Brood can take him over. So, something to look out for, but the Tree and Protector, I love this, dude. This I love this. That's a good pickup. That's really going to allow the lockdown for uh, Chengwei that they need to get in position for, you know, whether it's a, a Witch Doctor all, you know, Viper, Omni Slash, anything. You just yeah. sit ducks as soon as the overgrowth comes and hits you. Yeah, and I mean, it's it's just great sustain, too. I mean, having Viper and uh, Treant on the same team is a combo that we used to see quite a bit by a lot of pro teams. I think Na'Vi used to run it quite a bit. Um, the old uh, the old DD squad that turned into Quantic Gaming, I think, they uh, they ran that quite a bit. Um, and, and it works out very well. I mean, it means your Viper is nigh indestructible. And uh, it's also really good with the Broodmother. Keeps her safe whenever she gets jumped on by those four heroes. But anyways... Let's introduce the teams as we get into the game here. Down on Team Changwe, we got Viper going to be taking up that mid lane. His uh, name is, what is this, Ultranum Style Up. U Ultranum, I guess we're going to go for. Misconception going to be taking that uh, Broodmother up towards the top lane. MMA, captain of the team, going to be playing that Tree and Protector. We've got Artes on the Juggernaut and Black Box on the Witch Doctor. Tytho, why don't you take over the uh, PT side? On the PT side, we got, uh, oh, my 
screen's messing up a little bit. We got Calamity running on the, the Bristleback. Looks like we got Calm Sertiza playing the Dazzle today. Honestly, I'm not too sure. We got Shock playing the Slark, our, our five picks. Interested to see how that's going to go. We got Steve Vai running on the uh, Lycan. And last but not least, we got our lovely friend Ebola <laughs> playing as a lion with its finger. <laughs> All right, down at bottom, looks like we're going to have a bit of engagement running out here for the... Uh, Zero minute bounty rune, but oh, oh man, that cask is oh, so good. Is the juggernaut spin doing oh. so much damage, and the uh, shallow grave goes out to try to save that slark. But Ebola might be in trouble here. Is he's running away? Is there going to be another stun for him? No, not for a few seconds. But Whoa, turns beautiful. around, great earth spike. Yeah, he's he's going to be out of there, no problem. But uh, he does take a ton of damage, and uh, he'll probably have to take a trip back to the well. PT's really lucky that they weren't they didn't give up any uh, first blood right there because I was really close. Yeah. Altercation. Oh boy. So yeah, this is uh, this is off to a pretty good start for Team Changwei. They got a really good exchange down there on the river. And uh, what are these lanes? Oh, okay. Juggernaut's teleporting up to top. I was like, what is going on here? But I don't know how I feel about this pickup on on the Juggernaut going uh, uh, quelling blade with stout shield st to start. I mean, it kind of leaves them really. I don't know, left out in the open. He's sitting only with, you know, 20 at MP right now. He only has four tangos to be able to regen anything. As soon as he goes any of that down, like, it's going to take a couple of these cool sprays and he's just going to be pushed out of lane and he's not going to be able to do anything about it. Yeah, and it's uh, it's kind of really weird because we I think we had the uh, the PT try to dodge that tri-lane uh, against the Brood, but it was just matched by the Changwei swapping themselves around as well. So we have the, uh, you know, a solo safe lane Brood with... Well, just basically full lane swaps, to be honest. I mean, offlaners in the safe lane, and safe laners in the offlane. Absolutely, and yeah, here we go. We got the Slark going in as middle, but he's not really able to do anything here. Yeah, we got. We're seeing a really good uh, lane control with the Viper right now, just making sure that the uh, you know there's more than one range creep pushing up against him to keep it uh, as close to his tower side as possible. So Slark's not able to get any of the last hits. Yeah, and I mean that's um, that's something that they were doing. Um, uh, that's something that uh, Changwei did really well with that Viper pick was they basically just guaranteed themselves a, a single lane with that mid lane. I mean, this Viper was going to win it no matter who they put there. And unless the PT drafted something that was like an absolute lane dominator that can match up against the Viper, like say a Queen of Pain or maybe even like a Storm Spirit or something for their last pick, um, they they pretty much lose mid lane. And they, they tried putting the Slark there because the Lycan wasn't going to work out. And uh, I mean, either one, Lycan or Slark, there, they were gonna, they were gonna lose out. So maybe we see the Lycan farm up to his Vlad's, get Roche, and then they switch the lanes out around or something. Maybe put the Lycan on the mid and get the Slark down. But either way, Sentry down now on the bottom lane, so they can see out that they can see the Broodmother. But I don't think it's really gonna matter all that much. As uh, I, I don't see the kill potential from him. I think the likely story that's going to happen here is waiting down into mid lane until uh, Lycan, or sorry, not Lycan, uh, Viper loses enough of his uh, HP. Right now, if you look at Ebola, he's sitting with a uh, Smoke of Deceit in his inventory, and I guarantee that that Dazzle and Lion are just waiting for a good opportunity to sneak out. Yeah. It's the only way for them to really capitalize and win that lane, right? Yeah. Now, top lane, it's uh, it's not looking too great for the Changwei there. They've got uh, the Tree of Protector. Pretty much out of mana, and uh, this Juggernaut's pretty close to out of regen as well. And this Bristleback is still pretty darn healthy. He's got himself a good stack of Tangos as well as one pooled one. And so I think if he uh, if he can sustain his harass with the Quill Sprays and stuff, he's just going to dominate this lane, and he's going to get great farm, which will equate to uh, which will equate to a great mid game for the PT. Honestly, if a Bristleback gets out of control like this, it can be trouble. Mid lane missed that one. The Viper just gets up on the Slark and finishes him off. Nice aggressive ward up here on the high ground to allow him to see up there and get that harass when he's down on down below. So, uh, gets the first blood and, yeah, Slark's not having a good time. Have you taken a look at the, uh, <laughs> the banner for Team Chengwei? If you look in the, uh... <laughs> <laughs> That's fantastic. That's pretty good. Yeah, this Broodmother is not having a good time. I mean, any time that she's placing down any of her webs, it's Sentry Ward's up within seconds. They're just, they're ready, waiting for it, and, you know, 
They don't know. They don't, they don't look like they're trying to take him down so much. So it's just yeah, top lane. Calamity finds himself too far forward. He's gonna get stunned out, and the maledict is on him, and they finish him off with a good handful of uh, right clicks. So I was saying that he was doing r really good, being that aggressive that far up, but uh, that's a know, good rotation yeah, on they, Black Box. Yeah, they pick him out, and uh, you know that malediction against the uh, Bristleback is is incredibly potent. Um, just it it just multiplies the amount of damage you do by such a great amount that you can't really do anything as the bristle once you've taken a certain amount of damage it's just you're stuck and now we're kind of sitting in this situation though with the you know juggernauts at level four sitting with 280 300 hp at this point sure he has a magic stick but he has absolutely no other regen right now oh there we go he's got some living armor on him so he'll be okay but with no mp he can't really do much yeah and i mean the tree into himself as well has no more mana for the living armor either so this lane is really dry up at top, so I think once Bristle gets around to uh, level 6, which he's going to be pretty darn soon, once he gets to his level 6, that Warpath is going to allow him to get some uh, sick kills there. But, uh, yeah, Chuck just having such a rough time on the mid lane. If you're looking at the stats right now, you know, the difference in team net worth, Chengwei is sitting at plus almost 1,500 uh, gold and plus 500 experience ahead of the PT. Yeah. They're farming pretty well, and uh, I think this Broodmother is going to contribute to a uh, very hefty uh, net worth lead. She's not doing too great right now, but I think as the game goes on, Broodmother is one of those heroes that just kind of takes control of a game by going into the jungle, getting a lot of farm, sometimes going for that Midas. Up at top, looks like they want to go on Calamity again. They throw out a uh, stun, but he's a little bit too far away for the cast to bounce, and uh, he walks away from that just fine. A little waste of the Maledict. Yeah, that's all right. I mean, the Witch Doctor is going to be out of mana now, and uh, Chengwei's playing He's on a uh, higher MS uh, ping than they're used to right now, though, right? Uh, yeah, I believe so. Yeah, um, that could have been from that. When I get a moment, I can pop open the console and check it. But uh, yeah, they they were having some routing issues, which caused the a bit of a delay on the start time for the game. But yeah, my connection myself is 200 MS. Yeah, though. I mean, I think I think they. They drafted well for it, though. I mean, there's not too many heroes that need to be super clutch on their team. They've got Juggernaut, they've got Viper. Like, Brood, you need to be able to micro a little bit, but uh, for the most part, she's pretty uh, she's pretty much straightforward A-click type of hero. So they've uh, they drafted well for it, and I think their draft is still pretty strong regardless. So they should be all right. Oh, this is going to be dangerous for the Broodmother here. Yeah. Line places down the Sentry Ward. Tries to zone him out. Oh, man. Mid lane again. Viper finds the... Uh, Finds the Slark and using that Viper Strike just holds him down and that's almost a full mechanism for Viper at six and a half minutes into this game. Oof. 150 gold and Oof. he'll have the full mech and we'll see him go for that Ags to follow it up but that could be really potent. Top lane, they want to go on Calamity. There they go. Cask is bouncing. Can they finish him off? Arteus is taking a lot of damage from that Quill Spray. One more could finish him off and the Calamity will run under the tower. I think the Maledict's going to get yeah. him. One more, one, tick, more tick. one more tick. And there he goes. Oh! Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that, that was exactly what we were talking oh, about. Oh, no. poor misconception down at the Broodmother on bottom lane. He doesn't know that they dropped down the Sentry Ward. Is he going to get him? Is he going to get him? Nice! Beautiful. Yeah. Nice kill on the Lycan there. Bringing it back a little bit for PT. Yeah, and if you note the range of that Sentry, comes to right here, and the Broodmother died right here. So dropping that second Sentry down was actually the key to getting that very last attack and finishing her off. So, uh, well played by the Lion. Well minded to uh, make sure that, that Sentry was down and... He's still sitting with uh, with the Smoke of Deceit in his inventory, and they haven't moved to migrate to help Slark out in the middle lane. Yeah, and I mean, I this is this is what I was talking about earlier during the draft was that like yes, they have a good ganking lineup, and they could go help keep down that Viper, but it means that the second that they leave, Brood's going to take control over this lane and shut the uh, Lycan down. I mean, the second the supports leave, Lycan is is useless in this lane. He won't get a single last hit. Yeah, farm for farm, I mean, we're looking at 49 last hits for the Lycan and 48 no, last hits for the Viper, that. so it's pretty easy in terms of trending-wise, except the gold and XP graphs are still looking like they're in uh, Chengwei's favor. Moving up to about 3,000k gold and uh, about 1,500 experience. That's yeah. And uh, Slark does actually find himself a bottle and uh, has a haste rune as well, so maybe they can make something happen here on the mid lane. Bristleback is rotated in as well. They don't have any slows for this Viper here. Whoa, I lost control of my camera there, but uh, we should be good. Now, this it's chasing Viper in. with a beautiful little mechanism that I don't think that they really Yeah, I mean, they get the pounce, but he is so beefy. Ooh, that was what I was talking about, armor. the living armor. And TPN, he's got the cast bouncing around. 
They do get the second bounce onto Calamity. Can they finish him off? They're chasing him down. The slows are good, and they kill off the Bristleback. Numb walks away with uh, about just under 200 HP, but uh, finds himself as phase boots off of that and that mechanism. Paying dividends there as they turn around that first gank and finish off the Bristleback. Well worth it. Ultra's mech is on par with the 10 fastest times in 683. Pro Dota fastest is 559. So yeah, that is a quick mechanism. And I mean, I think that was only due to, what did he get? Two kills in lane as well as uh, just pretty much uncontested free farm. 57 last hits already at nine minutes into this game. That is a pretty healthy score to have. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. <laughs> Anyways. Lycan's already picked up the Medallion of Courage. We might be seeing a rush into Rosh anytime soon. Yeah, maybe. He doesn't have any lifesteal quite yet, and there's no additional Minus Armor um, as it stands. The uh, Bristleback has not even skilled up the Viscous Nasal Goose, so maybe they could make that move into Rosh, but uh, I don't think it'll happen until he gets himself a Blads. Sitting with 900 gold in his, in his uh, coffers right now, and he already has the Ring of Basilius. It's not far away. Yeah. Uh, we got to pause out here. It might be a little bit due to the uh, some of the lag that we were experiencing earlier, but uh, <laughs> sitting at two sixteen. Yeah, actually, this would be a good time for me to crack open the console and just see what everyone's ping is sitting at. All right, yeah. So we <laughs> okay. So MMA and uh, NCK Nick, who's that? Um, Is that the uh, Trian Protector? Yeah, I know. Uh, a couple of players on Changwei have over a thousand ping right now, so they're going to disconnect and uh, reconnect. Hopefully do a little bit better. We are playing on the Brazil servers right now, and like I said, Changwei is from uh, Uruguay, so that is a little bit of a stretch for him. It would be like playing to... Yeah, it's, it's like playing the US West from... or US East from where we are, but... Either way... Let's check out some of the item progressions so far. We got Juggernaut sitting on his phase boots right now. The uh, Broodmother's got nothing but a soul ring, but that's all she really needs to start out the game. Uh, hopefully that farm will increase as the game goes on. Uh, we've got phase boots and the mechanism on the Viper, and he's going to start working towards that, uh, that Agonims as we talked about. We've got the Medallion up on the Lycan, and not too much else to speak of. Either way... Yeah, this Treant Protector is just not having a good game so far. He's not yeah. really able to pick up anything or find any and, you know, space to take a little farm. Yeah, generally with Treant, you want him to be the stacking support. If you get him in a nice safe lane, he's usually the one that you'll have stacking and pulling the safe, the uh, the small camp while your other range support harasses out the lane. But uh, they just didn't have that opportunity because they were kind of forced to juggle around the lanes a little bit. And they had the Treant sitting up at top lane. I would have liked to see him... Maybe even helping out the brood, pulling the lane back, or uh, or just side pulling off to this hard camp in the top lane. I think that would have done them very well. But uh, I don't know. It's, I think uh, we're about to see a mana boots pick up on black box, which will increase their pushing effectiveness. Oh yeah, he's uh, he's pretty rich, eh? Two kills, sitting, absolutely two kills. I, that's probably the reason why we're seeing him as being the stacking support over the tree and protector this game. Well, yeah, I mean, I, I think his gold all came from kills. Like, he he hasn't really been, uh, like I said, there ha there hasn't been much stacking because they just didn't pull over to that hard camp like they, uh, like I think they might, they should have at some points, but yeah, he was just very active on the map and got a lot done for his team, so. Oh, this poor Slark. He's sitting at just buying his first boots in his inventory and his stash. He's got... 13 last hits, 0 deny, sitting with 2 deaths versus uh, the Viper sitting at 61 last hits with 29 denies. Yeah, and thankfully That's... Slark is a hero that does recover fairly well. Um, I mean, if you can get into the jungle, once he's, once he's level 6, uh, the health regen is just good enough that you can sustain some farm on the map for a while. You don't have to take those an obnoxious trips back to base that you do with some other heroes. You know, you kind of get behind and then, like, jungle creeps do too much damage, so you do two camps and you have to run back to base and it's just... Uh, it, it can get disgusting, but Slark doesn't really have that problem. He can uh, farm up the jungle pretty efficiently as long as he's got some levels under his belt. So we'll see him start to bounce back a little bit here, but he is definitely uh, behind, and it's going to stay that way for quite a while. 
I would have actually liked to see him skill Dark Pact in lane because he knew full well that he wasn't going to be doing um, doing very well. And, you know, they, they kind of sacrificed him by putting him in mid lane. Like, he knew he was going to have a bad lane there. He knew he wasn't going to get last hits. And uh, Pounce is really for getting kills. Like, jumping in on people, dishing out damage quickly, and uh, then getting out. That's, that's why you skill Pounce. But uh, I think Dark Pact offers a little bit more in terms of farming potential. It's, you know, it's a lot more damage. And uh, the cooldown going down, you can farm up jungle camps a lot quicker with that Dark Pact. So I think I would have liked to see him max that first. And Don't then forget just the, uh, piece it off to the jungle. The reduction in mana when you're upgrading, you know, Dark Pact. And when you hit level 4, you're hitting 300 damage. And it's only 40 of your mana as opposed to 50, 55. Like, that's almost a 50% in fish, like efficiency increase. Not to mention the damage and only having a 6 second cooldown. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I, I think you would have a lot better time recovering had he skilled that way instead and now he's got some damage from the pounce and he's got the mobility but uh it's not really going to do too much for him as he really doesn't have the damage or the levels to back it up so uh we'll see how that fares for him but pounce is really just like uh what marana's marana's leap ability like it has a pretty long cooldown and you only want to be using it when you're trying to get away if you're not in a position of power yeah so in the case where you're against a viper like you just like with a marana you want to save it you want to hold it until you, it's the, your last chance to be able to get away he's he's playing it like you can get as aggressive as possible but i mean the fact of the matter is with a mechanism with corrosive skin with nether toxin there's no chance he's going to be able to Oof. oh <laughs> wow yeah, that's uh, that's rough. I mean, like I said, I, I think I think this comes down more to the draft than his uh, than Chuck's actual play because you stick a Slark against a Viper, it's gonna happen. There there is no scenario in which you pick the Slark against the Viper and you outplay the Viper to win the lane. It's it is picks, and I think I would have liked to see a much more. Um, traditional mid in the form of like you know a pock a storm a queen of pain an invoker anything that can kind of just hold their own and get some last hits against the range of the viper but we just didn't see that and, and i mean they're suffering for it but uh you know we'll see we'll see how that plays out as the game goes on there is some decent net worth on the rest of them 25th place at 10 minutes yeah <laughs> so he's uh, uh yeah he's pretty much on par for the 25th worst Slark in pro play, but once again, it's the scenario, not so much his play, so can't grill him too hard for that, but... And at least you'll have these skeleton warriors to creep him up above the yeah. 25th place slot. Well, here we go, now we have full 10 players back into the game. Alright, so, we're calling for a go, we'll be unpausing in just a second, and we're back underway. Alright. Glad that wasn't too long. With some of these server issues, there's been times where the pauses just go ridiculously long, but uh, glad we're not seeing that here. But anyways, this uh, mid-tower is actually going to drop really soon here, probably will with the next creep wave. It's down to 192 HP. They can fort for it, but I don't know if they will. Yeah, they didn't have the presence of mind to do that, and Viper gets the last hit on it, so that's a lot of gold in his pockets. And with that mech up now, he can start to rotate out to other lanes and uh, and dish out the damage. Calamity up at top, looking for a kill on Arteus. Is he going to dive under the tower? Looks like he wanted to, but uh, no nasal goo. You gotta get that one point in nasal goo, man. That that seems like seems too valuable to not do. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Like it's it's three percent slow to be able Viper. to start and just having. Oh. Viper walks up top, finds a bristle back, and looking for the slark. Oh, uh, and shadow dance just in time to be able to escape from. Yeah, the and lion lion helps him on his retreat, but that is still a kill on the bristle back. And despite this bristle having what I what I figured would be a really good lane for him, he's down four kills now, and he hasn't done too, all that much. I mean, um, he, he's getting aggressive and he's bullying people out where he can, but. Uh, he keeps getting turned around on, and uh, things like the Witch Doctor with the Maledict and the Viper are just showing up. I mean, he's just had a really rough time when it comes down to it, and uh, now we're going to see some serious pressure up on this uh, safe lane tower on the dire side. But don't forget the Broodmother. He's coming down onto the bottom lane, was able to take uh, down, what, 800 of the HP on that tower. 
as uh, CH is pushing on top lane. But hey, we got the TP coming down from the bristle back, uh, forcing him away from the tower, and thankfully only making it a one for nil trade. Yeah, and it uh, looks like we have some rotation from uh, the PT up here towards top. They're all smoked up. They want to get in here and see if they can find a kill, but the uh, Viper just TP'd out. Maybe they find the Jug, though. Yeah, walks right into the line, gets hexed up. They're going to stun him out, stacking that up a little bit, but he does get the spin off. Physical damage is going to be way too much, though. They bring him down. Juggernaut dead for 30 seconds, and the PT find themselves their second kill of the game. But here we go on bottom lane, just as the rotations are coming in, Bristleback goes down and the Broodmother stays up. <laughs> what did I say like 30 seconds ago? The Viper and the Witch Doctor keep showing up to mess up this Bristleback, and sure enough, what do we have? The Viper and the Witch Doctor show up to mess up the Bristleback, and he takes a fall, and this will probably be the Tier 1 Tower on bottom as well, so... Three Tier 1 Towers all taking spill in relatively quick succession, and uh, PT not feeling good about their position here. Yeah, net worth looking past 6k at this point in favor for Changwei. 4k when we're looking at XP. I mean, the highest value person in the game right now, uh, in terms of last hits, is uh, the Lycan. But, I mean, this Viper is sitting at 2k in the bank and a mech. Ugh. I mean, look at, look at actual net worth, though. Not just uh, the last hits, as the Viper is sitting about 2,000 gold net worth above the Lycan, um, and that, a lot of that's just come from the five kills, kills he has, and, and I mean, three towers, of course, so uh, Chengwei is definitely sitting in a very dominant position, and they're rotating down for this Bristleback again. They want to go on him, and uh, they got the spiders up there, slowing him down just a little bit. Viper's there, Viper Strike goes out, they're holding him down, and this cast is going to bounce forever between these two things. Oh, there we go, the Death Ward, that was just overkill. Uh, I think that was a little bit overkill. I think they could have saved that Death Ward to secure a different kill. Out. Yeah, totally. It's, I mean, whatever. You bring him down, you get the kill, and that's momentum on that lane as well. And uh, the PT are running out of room to farm. I mean, they've got nowhere to they've got nowhere to go on this map that's safe, really. This Viper is just going wherever he pleases, and there's not much that can stop him. I don't think they're too happy with their ward placement. They definitely were thinking the game was going to go otherwise, but the last five minutes has just not proved in uh, in PT's favor, and they're scattering all over the map right now, just barely trying to look for some farm. Yeah, and. You're sitting at boots and 140 gold with, with Magic Wand on the line. He's level 5, doesn't even have a 6 yet. Like, yeah, he's trying to farm up this bottom lane to get to his level 6, but there's a Juggernaut waiting in the wing, and if Juggernaut charges forward with that Mask of Madness and uses the Yummy Slash, that could be a kill. But bottom lane, Tier 2 going to take a fall as the Brood and the Viper do what they do best, and uh, top lane still facing pressure by the Juggernaut. Lycan running around here in his true form. Looks like he wanted to go on bottom, but uh, didn't quite do it, and ends up just uh, spending the ultimate to do pretty much nothing. He's just going to farm up here, do whatever he can, but uh, that's not all that much. I don't think PT's out of this at this point yet. They may have had a bit of a you know sour start to be able to begin this game, but, I mean, you can never count a team out, especially when you got a Lycan in the field. I mean, you give a couple of minutes, uh, like, oh, you have lane. the Slark go out, he picks one person off, Bola's going to try to TP out of this, but oh, actually, oh no, he ties in base to the poison. Oh, uh, yeah. Depressing. That, that tick timing was just perfect enough. Top lane, bounces from that uh, cask are going to hold down the bristleback and the death ward to go again. Takes a oh. fall and black box is all over this bristleback. I mean, there is just nothing he can do. Chuck comes in to try to help out, but gets Omni slashed. Pops off his ultimate, but uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, that blade fury. Lost the name of the ability, but uh, Blade Fury goes up and uh, holding down the Slark. Will they find the oh, kill? He is so low! Leaps, leaps away. Okay. Dazzle saves him, but takes a fall in the meantime, and uh, that's going to be the kill. So, Changwei sitting at 11-2, and two, and they are definitely happy with their position here. Brood free farming away at the bottom lane, going to be pushing in on that Tier 3 in a second, and then Tier 2 facing pressure on the top. They know it. PT doesn't know what to do. Lion pinged out the bottom lane, getting pushed out by the Brood, but they're just going to let the Tier 2 fall on top. There's nothing they can really do right now. Yeah. Scattering from point A to point B, but they're not able to pick up any farm in between. And the net worth is just going to continually keep going into the favor of CH. They're sitting at past 12k at this point. Yeah, I mean, they're, they're just... They're having a field day with this game, and if they don't... Uh, if they don't abuse their advantage to uh, too much of an extent... You know, oh, not, what a pick off yeah. from Broodmother against the Slark on the bottom lane. Yeah, I mean, that that was just a case of being totally out-leveled. The Slark, three levels behind that Broodmother, she just jumps in with that incapacitating bite, and that is it. 
And we're going to see Ag Scepter being picked up on the Viper as he picks up this bounty rune. He has enough money, and here it's coming on to the next. Yeah, 8 0 0. I like the fact that he has no assists because he just finishes off every kill that happens. He He's starts been... what he finishes. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Or he finishes what he starts he all the way around. What he starts. <laughs> Milk of Jug. <laughs> but, uh. Yeah, we see the beginnings of an Aghanims on the Witch Doctor as well. He's got that uh, ultimate orb, and it looks like uh, Chengwe is going to go for Roche, and if they get that, then that could be very close to the nail in the coffin for the PT here. I mean, that means that Lycan's not going to be able to sneak the Roche, get that, uh, you know, flash from that he needs, and from there, like, you know, they've got so much, they've got so much potential for kills. That, oh, uh, here we go. We got good. the smoke coming out for the first time, but they but, don't realize that. Oh, oh they, they dropped the sentry. The tree. They found the tree. Oh man, that was so unfortunate. He's scouting it out with the nature's guys, but they have a sentry ward nearby and they get the kill on the treant, which will actually deflect the pressure onto the Roshan. So maybe they sneak in here and try to grab Rosh for themselves. Stopping for the Ancients first. I don't know if that's the best call, but... Yeah, so uh, Viper seven minutes ahead of the average timing for a uh, Mech Aghanim. So he's, uh, yeah, he's definitely off to a good start. And I, I like this stat as well. 77 and 29. He has 29 denies. Which means that while he was sitting in lane, you know, dominating that Slark, he was also denying to keep him, keep him out of experience. And that's something that uh, amateur players qu uh, quite often forget to do. They're like, oh, I'm getting last hits, whatever. And they don't really focus too hard on their last hitting. But anyways, down at bottom, yeah, Bristleback finds himself caught out and just gets eaten alive. Finished off there, and uh, the kill will go to uh, Ultra Numb again. This poor Bristleback is sitting at 1 and 8. At first it was the Slark getting beaten in lane, but, I mean, now they just realize that Calamity doesn't have anything to be able to get away. He, I mean, he has no form of escape mechanism. As soon as he pushes past, you know, here or here, he's going to get picked up, he's going to get jumped on, and he's just going to die. And here we go, CH looking to pick up Roshan again. Yeah, and... I mean, like I said, in the lanes, I think Bristleback, sh Bristleback should have actually had a fairly good lane. Like, Bristle matches up really well against Juggernaut. Treant doesn't do all that much in lane, and the only real X Factor is that Witch Doctor. And um, I, it all just came down to how it was, how well it was played by uh, Black Box here. I mean, he, he waited for the perfect opportunities to get those casts out, and the Death Ward was just doing absolute work once he hit six. So I think uh, I think a lot of this was on the Witch Doctor just playing really efficiently and really smart to keep that Bristleback down because. Uh, you know, Bristol was in a great position to start bullying him out, and he just didn't let him have it. Anyways, yeah, Slark trying to do that, like, recovery jungle that we were talking about, just running through the jungle, using Dark Pack to farm up as quickly as he can. He's accrued himself a little bit of gold, and he's starting to come back in terms of net worth. He's above the Bristleback, but still behind the Witch Doctor and the other three cores of uh, Chengwe right now. So, I mean, they are in... Well, here we go, straight, jumping on Black Box. They find him. Can they get this kill before oh, the fight starts out? That would be huge. But no, the Overgrowth oh. comes out and the... Oh, man, the Death Ward gonna go out. Lycan trying to run away from that, but he's got Maledict on him. I think he's gonna fall after that pops. And yeah, there we go. Double kill with the one Maledict proc between the Slark and the Lycan. Now chasing it on the line. He's gonna get Shallow Grave, but I don't think there's any way he walks out of this no matter what. He's just... Yeah, he's juking around behind the tower. One more attack. We'll fly out from the Viper and he gets another kill. That'll be it. Three heroes down on the uh, PC side in exchange for only the Witch Doctor and a Tier 2 going to take a spill here as well. It was a nice little coordination that they were trying to do there with because he was sitting on the ward, right? Yeah. Just on top by uh, the middle Tier 2. And both Lycan and Slark saw that, so they kind of wrapped around coming in through here and through here to try and, you know, pincer him down. But unfortunately, his team was just too fast on the reaction. Yeah. Teams down by six towers in 20 minutes have never come back in 6A3 pro play. That's uh, that's a good stat. And I mean, this is this is not pro play. This is amateur league. We're, 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 this is the South American Iron Division of the UGC League. So this is the uh, second tier down, I think. So, um, you know, there's, there's still opportunity to throw this. But Arteus gets caught out right on the front line. His Aegis is going to pop. He is now dead. Broodmother getting caught out. Drops him really low and will actually get finished off there. The Lycan finds that kill. So uh, they get a couple good ones, and they deflect the pressure on their Tier 3 for now. But uh, actually, that Tier 3 tower is sitting at 18 HP. I didn't even realize it. Those Spiderlings could go kill it off if the Brood is micro them. But yeah, this tower is uh, not long for this world. Yeah, there we go. It's going to get denied. Oh. This is looking brutal. I, lo I love the Juggernaut score, too. 0, 1, and 8. He's gotten the assist on absolutely everything. 
no kills for him though. I think the Witch Doctor and the Viper have been taking pretty much everything from him. Well, Viper's sitting at 10 and 2. Yeah, oh yeah, 10 and 2, and then on that uh, Witch Doctor we got 5 one, 6 and he's got uh, three quarters of his Aghanim Scepter. About uh, 900 gold to go before he picks up the full thing, and from there, I don't even know what you do if you're the PT, man. Looking for, look for as much farm as you can, I mean... There's not a lot that you can do. Uh, they're just so far ahead in, in, in levels, they're so far ahead in XP. Uh, gold, there's there's nothing that you can really do. Three of them can jump on four, four you know, it could be a four on three, and two whoever's on the three, if it's CH, it's more likely that they're going to be able to take it down. I really like this ward placement up in the jungle, um, in between the two caps. You, you, yeah. We were playing a game earlier, and you were mentioning the effectiveness of this, because no one ever actually plays Yeah, th this is a really it. nice ward spot right here, because it covers down into here, it gives you a little bit of vision over here, and it spots out this camp and this pathway, and uh, it never gets dewarded, because people either drop their sentry here, and uh, the radius only extends, you know, around there, and then they drop their sentries up here. And so it's it's a really, really good place. Gives you a lot of vision, and uh, never really, you know, people don't think to think to uh, deward it. Wow, PT's going all on the uh, defensive, though. They've placed up wards basically everywhere along, along the battlements around yeah. there. They, they can see everything on their side of the map, which is which is a really nice position to be in when you're defending. Um, but, I mean, what is it really going to matter? Because, you know, vision can only do so much for you before the enemy team barrels in with their unstoppable, unkillable viper, and you just have to kind of cry yourself to sleep. It's He's know. sitting with an ultimate orb on the viper. I think we're going to be seeing a mantis style coming up in the next couple of minutes here. Yeah. There's a very strong possibility, and yeah, they're just chipping away at this bottom tower here. Not even bothering to go for the exposed racks mid, but, uh... Yeah, Dazzle gets a decent ultimate out. Slark on the back line, though. He's, like, looking for that Treant Protector, but he can't really find a Treant. is way too beefy. Overgrowth catches, too. Steve Vi trying to do whatever he can, running around, see if he's seeing if he can get any kills on the back line, but he's not really able to burst anyone down. The damage is just too good. Juggernaut in on the back line of the PT, looking for that Dazzle, trying to finish him off, but no. He actually gets fingered up himself and will oh. get Earth Spike, so they finish off the Juggernaut in exchange for that Slark. Really well played there by the Lion. That was what I was talking about during the draft, is that once that Blade Fear is down, you know, Lion actually wrecks Juggernaut pretty darn hard, but the tower's going to take a fall, and maybe the racks to follow if uh, the PT can't uh, gather themselves here and, you know, deflect this pressure somehow. I like how in that last little fight, Lion was ready for the end of the Omni Slash to be able to throw the Hex down before that he was able to go into Blade Fury. Like, that was just so well-timed and so well-placed. Yeah. As far as much as he is behind, it, he's not really able to farm. Yeah, and that may have been uh, that may have been another one of those uh, ping issues we were seeing from Chang Wei, unable to hit the Q right immediately after. But either way, Slark is back in on the bottom lane here. Blackbox actually drops almost instantly, and MMA going to take a fall very quickly thereafter. They're looking for that Viper. That'll be such a huge kill if they get it. Oh, They're chasing the minus oh armor is up. Can they get him? There we go. The Slark oh. gets a kill, 800 gold in his Holy pocket. Smokes. They are it's happy like about that. Five. And, uh, and he finishes up his Shadow Blade. And that is a gem thrown over to the Lion as well. So if we look at the fight recap, that is about a uh, 4,500 gold swing in uh, the favor of the PT. And they get a gem, which uh, kind of counts as another 900 on top of that. So, uh, you know, despite being as far down as they are, this game is still recoverable for them. I don't know what is going on here. Every time I move my mouse to the right side of the screen, it gets caught and I just throw my camera off into the trees. I'm not quite sure what's going on, but that's been happening to me. It's been it's been rolling over to my dual monitor, but it never does that in games or any other thing that I've yeah. cast. Huh. I don't know. Anyways, Lion running around with this gem that he picked up from the enemy team, doing a lot of dewarding, and so they're actually starting to gain a little bit of map control on their side. Like I said, their warding was really good before that fight. Um, but uh, it'll be even better after this fight now that they've uh, got the D wards coming up from the enemy team. There is a Shadow Blade on the Slark now, which, although it's, you know, might be a little bit too little too late, um, it will allow him quite a bit of damage and might let him finish off heroes like that Witch Doctor um, in, in, uh, in these next couple fights. I mean, the Witch Doctor has kind of been doing a lot of the work with that Death Ward, but if he gets dropped really early on by a Slark with a Shadow Blade, you know, things could turn around. We're going to see a pickup on the Witch Doctor very shortly. He's going to have his Ags up. Yeah. And uh, I think now that the base is opened up, 
Chengwei is going to try to uh, kind of split back into uh, more of a typical Broodmother style of play where instead of pushing with the Broodmother, you're going to do something like this where they get the four-man smoke gank going up into the enemy jungle, try to cause some action on the map while Brood pushes in towards bottom. And uh, yeah, Dazzle gets caught out here. He's, yeah, he was going to try to TP out. Actually, he doesn't even have a TP, but uh, yeah, just stands uh, in place. He actually used the, he used the TP, but I believe he got hit by the cask and that's what's... That uh, okay, alright, yeah, I... It was like a half pop. It was just a waste of 100 gold. It's really unfortunate. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, so they find a kill, and now with that, uh, you know, 4-on-4 four four position, they can push on, on the mid lane, take a 4-on-4 four four fight, and allow the Brood a free lane down to, to herself at bottom. But uh, Calamity's actually doing a pretty good job at holding out this Brood here. All of her Spiderlings are really low. A couple more Quill Sprays will drop them, and I do actually like that armlet pickup. Anyways, mid lane, big fight breaks out. Death Ward is going down, doing so much damage to Steve Vi. He's not going to make it out of that. Finger of Death goes out onto the Witch Doctor, but it's not going to matter. They finish off the Lycan, and they're going to walk away from that with nary a scratch as that Snark pursues onto the Witch Doctor. I don't know if he's going to find it, though. There we go. Holding him down, and actually that Lycan Wolf is enough to keep that Snark locked down. He's going to buy back, and the Lycan will probably buy back as well. They really want to defend this. They are in desperation mode, but they've already lost the racks down to the bottom lane and soon to lose a melee racks as well. Those Necro Creeps going to work. Not quite going to get it, though. Really close. Mid lane, Rax taking a spill. Uh, they're taking some damage, but not quite enough. They're not going to commit to this, and uh, the buybacks may be enough to deflect the rest of this pressure. You know, the strategy that CH is playing right now, I, I actually really like because it's a super effective strategy. You're looking at Juggernaut, he has the Manta style, right? You're looking at Viper, he has the Manta style. You're looking at Broodmother, she has the Necronomicon. They just have so many adds, so many disp dip like dispensable units that they can just throw and just smash the front gates of PT. And it's really, really starting to, to, to tear their base up. I mean, you're looking at... 280 HP sitting on the melee racks. In the middle one, you're looking at, you know, no front door, no front door tower to be able to stop anything. And it looks like they're about to go in and try for another Rosh fight this could now be that dangerous, it's up. Though. I mean, we saw a Rosh fight go the wrong way earlier on, and, uh, you know, it, it, it ended up going Chingwei's favor in the end, but, you know, that could always turn back around. Um, the other thing I want to mention too is that uh, I think the PT really needs to start taking fights outside of their base. They've been uh, doing a lot of waiting until the Changwei walks up into their, um, you know, just up their ramp and into their base before they start the fight. And while that's been working for them in terms of positioning, it uh, has meant that the racks are taking a lot of chip damage. And we see, you know, about, uh, you know, 300 damage of chip damage on the range oh, racks. Oh, they found the Broodmother. Oh, yeah, this could be big. Lions trying find... to wipe them down, but they don't quite have them. Yeah, Shallow Grave going to go out on the line, keep him held down, and they do finish off the Brood. Going to be able to get rid of that Necro Creep before uh, it finishes off line as well. So really great pick off there. And, uh, you know, like I said, that's that's exactly the point. That's, you know, got to take those fights outside of your base so that you're not risking that chip damage. And if you keep taking kills like that on the outside of your base, you know, they, they can start to make this come back. And Lycan's kind of into full split push mode. He does have that Necro 3, so he can start splitting away from his team, maybe cause some havoc up on those side lanes, get him, uh, get him some tower gold. And they're going to smoke? Is this a Roshan? I think they're going for the Rosh. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I would agree, oh, but... Oh, this is two teams coming in. Oh, both of them smoked. This is going to be big. Oh. They see each other, and uh, there we go. The PT charging forward. Slark jumps in, catches MMA with that pounce. Absolutely fantastic. They're holding him down. Can they finish him off? He, he gets the overgrowth, but falls very shortly thereafter. But that Death Ward, oh my god, from the trees. It is doing so much damage. The bag in his bounces. Too much. Three heroes down. Lycan trying to do whatever work he can, but he is really squishy right now. He's just going to run away from that Viper. Scurries off, and he's going to be the only surviving member of his team. Gem gets dropped on the ground and it will go back to the to Team Changwe. So, wow. I, I actually can't believe that the PT did as much damage as they did with that Death Ward from the Witch Doctor. That was crazy. Oh, that pickup of the Ags. It just, once you start getting those double bounces and, and it just absolutely rips and tears apart the opposing team. Unless you have uh, it doesn't even block, it goes through a, a BKB, does it not? Uh, yes, it's it's all physical damage. It's all physical, so it's not even negated by. It's by absurdly powerful as an ability. Yeah, and I mean, uh, that that fight though, it was just so perfect the positioning with that wish doctor sitting back in that camp and just getting the bounces over the wall to everyone in this area. It was just insane, and this might this might be what uh, causes a GG call here. We're gonna see two lanes of racks take a fall almost for sure, and uh, yeah, not negated by damage blocks either. I don't think there's anything with any blocks on the side of the field but anyways Lycan gets a uh gets a shallow grave to try to keep him alive but the spiderlings chasing him down are gonna get that kill so uh Lycan takes a fall and uh Chengwei can 
can keep up the pressure. I mean, they, they don't really have anything to stop. And the Bristol's sitting on the front line, but, I mean, they've proven time and time again that the Bristol is no big deal for him. Slark's there as well, trying to make something happen, but the Overgrowth holds him down. He gets the Shallow Grave, but that might have been a little bit premature as he walks away from that with over half his health. Juggernaut trying to hold down Calamity, and there we go, the Death Ward bouncing around again. Gets one kill, gets two, and they are they going to find the third on the Dazzle? I don't There's think so. GG going to be gone. Calls. Yeah. One exciting game, and I mean, it it was it was ill fated from the start for the PT, but I think they fought as well as they could, and uh, you know they tried to make something happen, but uh, you know just kind of fell apart for him. And at the end of the game, that was it. Team Changwe chip him away, get a couple good fights, and bring down the racks, and that is the GG call. Anyways, that was uh, game number one. We'll be heading into game number two. This is a two-game series, so uh, we'll be heading into game number two in just a second here. But uh, I believe, uh, Julian Teifel, you got to take off, my friend, don't you? I do, I do. Thank you, everyone, for uh, tuning in and paying attention and listening to us. Uh, yeah, game two is underway. We'll see you guys shortly. All right, sounds good. I will be back, and uh, Julian will not. We'll see you in a second. I'm going to throw up an overlay. Don't go anywhere. The game will be underway in about five minutes. So uh, stay tuned, grab yourself some water, and we'll be right back. Cheers.
And ladies and gentlemen, we are back! This is the UGC League. We got uh, Team uh, the Paradas Tretas versus Team Chengue. So, um, South America special going on here. The Chengue from uh, Uruguay and uh, the Paradas Tretas from uh, Peru. And uh, I did look up the translation on that. The Paradas Tretas. Uh,